fools. What's up, fools? I pity the fool. I pity the fool. I pity the fool. What's up, Zach? My man. Iowa dude. What's up? We got to have you on some night, Zach. You got to have a fellow Iowa guy on. I forget what you said you did now. Again, you're in body, you're a body shop guy or you're in a shop or. David Carlisle. Dave's not here, man. What's up, David? How you doing, brother? Uh, good evening, sir. Texas 2A, what's up, CP? Peter Savinsky, Wasted Talent Fabrications. What's up, fellas? Welcome to the show. Well, welcome to the big show. I love to, and I work at a body shop at Peterbilt. Hell yeah. David Carlisle, winner of the first shop. Uh, we got the channel members already up in this. Uh, Peter Savinsky. Uh, well, uh, are you shop monkey? It's not bad. I know Matco has a new one, has one now. I haven't sold sold it to any shop, so I don't know what it's like. Thank you. Uh, that's exactly what I'm here for tonight. Uh, I really want to see if anybody has any experience. So I've got Max Tracks right now, and I hate it. And I want to get something new. Uh, I don't really want to mess around too much with someone with going through all the demo processes. I don't have time to deal with salesmen, but I'd really like to look at new shop management software. David Carlisle was the first like. So if anybody has any ideas, the ideas, if you have any ideas about shop management. <laughs> The ideas about the shop management. Well, welcome to the big show. Boom, shakalaka. Says 2000 MCR. Well, welcome to the big show. Sorry, I don't normally do Tuesday night streams. I just needed to, I didn't have time to really put out a video today. So, uh, and I wanted to kind of do a quick stream because I've been asking around. I've talked to several people. Wanted to get anybody's opinions out there. If you deal or use with shop software, please let me know. If you're watching this live stream quickly after we do this, uh, please comment down below and tell me your experience on shop software. Uh, it was warm today, man. Dennis Rigger, how you doing, brother? Uh, it is. It has been fairly warm here today. It was like 80, what was the temperature? 80 degrees here today? Not bad. I mean, wasn't terrible. 81 today? Not terrible. Supposed to be in the 80s the rest of the week. I've got, I've got, a, I've got a lot of shit going on this week, so I've been busier than a one-legged cat in a sandbox. Supposedly works alongside our scanners to show data on invoices and save time in the system. Yeah, so that's that's actually really cool because then that kind of does with the. But the problem is I don't have any Matco scanners, so kind of a moot point for me. But that definitely. So Snap On has theirs too, and the problem is is expense, man. Expense, 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 expense. Everybody nickels and dimes you in a shop setting. Uh, that's what people don't understand. When you have a shop, everybody tries to nickel and dime you. You know, whether it's tool guys or salesmen or reps, BG reps, or, you know, oil salesmen. You know, it's always somebody trying to nickel and dime you. Parts guys, mid-80s here, hell yeah. Riverside was in the 80s today. Yeah, wasn't bad here. It was actually good. Uh, kept my ass at home. Didn't even sweat day. Bad dream to, to production. I'm here. What's up, buddy? How you doing? Look at all the Iowa. Zach, this guy down below here, Bad Tree, is another Iowa fella. Look at we got Iowa people just all up in here. 
Watch all the people that badmouth Iowa people. What's up, Badgery? We got to stick together. There's a lot of people that badmouth Iowa on YouTube. I'll tell you. We know what's up. Got the dart back out here a couple weeks ago, I seen. Cruising down the street. Good to see that thing back out. This will be your first full year with that bad tree, won't it? Be the first full year you got to get that thing out in the road. You bought it like tail end of last year, didn't you? Fellow corn man. Hell yeah. Mopar, but if you're like LS, you drink Bud Light. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> What's up, Checkmate 115? <laughs> Listen, we can't, we can't be, we can't, we, we can't always drink Bud Light. I drink Bush Light, which is still Anheuser. You know, it's just, it is what it is. Hey, listen, didn't I see you drinking Bud Light in one of your videos one time? <laughs> Checkmate 115. I want to visit, I want to visit Iowa someday. Hell yeah. That's what I thought. So this will be your first full year with that thing. That's awesome. I can't wait to see you run it down the drag strip and whatnot. I was going to smell like smoke due to Canada fires. I don't know. We'll see. Well, usually we get western fires that come here for a gag. <laughs> That's what they all say. That's what they, they always say, oh, it was just a joke. <laughs> I can tell you what, I've never drank Bud Light. I ain't drank a Bud Light. Oh, I take that back. I take a. I drank a Bud Light Lime. I had a Bud Light Lime a couple couple years back before I quit really drinking. Uh, Ohio didn't have to do the Equus, so I drank Bud Light. Now I'm in. I'm on now. Ig invented a tool that will have to do the scissor effect. Butt chugging three Bud Lights at one time. <laughs> Hell yeah. I, I I only Bud Light I drank was Bud Light Lime. I've never been a fan of Bud Light. Always gave me a headache. Don't like Miller Light. Uh, I like Coors Light. Uh, Coors Original. But I drink a beer, period. Which is, I have, like I said, I haven't had anything to drink. I haven't had any whiskey or nothing. Probably going to have my first beer maybe this weekend, finally. Might have one. Bud Light, Bud Light Lime was pretty good. Yeah, it was. At least it didn't turn you into a fairy, but uh, I'm not a big fan of. What's up, Mark M? Not a huge beer drinker. I was a whiskey drinker. I just went straight to the hard stuff. Oh, yeah, those Natter days were good for a first couple. There you go. Uh, Keystone wasn't bad. Miller Lite's your go-to. I, I got a couple buddies who are diehard Miller Lite guys. PBR? I grew up on PBR in Old Milwaukee. I'm not gonna be. I'm not gonna lie. P Paps are old style. I'm so effed up. Have me on. Oh, you want to come on? The, you want to come on the live stream? Well, hell yeah. Let's have you on. Let's have some fun. Rum and coke all day. Uh here. Let me just throw a link in here. I'll just throw a link because we're not. I'm not. I probably won't stay on real long. I'll just throw a link in the chat. That way anybody can come on that wants to. Maybe we can have an all Iowa stream. Get Zach on here too. Uh Mark M rum and coke all day. Yeah, I used to do do uh I used to do rum and cokes too. What's up, Badry? Brother, how you been? I'm good. I'm good. The weather's finally, fi finally good here in Iowa. You look like a bunch of toolboxes. Yeah, I am. I don't, I don't show my face on uh, YouTube anymore for troll purposes. It pisses Fucking them off. And they don't. Get, they don't. It pisses them off, and they don't get to see you. So they that makes them angry. So I like making them angry. Why don't I you like show? That. Your face? <laughs> Like, I like it, that. Like, why, they always ask, "Why don't you show your face?" Because <laughs> so, and not only that, I get been... more clicks. I want to see him. Is he ever yeah. going to 
is he ever going to show himself? Yeah, I'm not, I mean, I will someday, maybe again. I don't know. The problem is, is like there's just too many people that I don't know. You know, you know, you know, you know the, you know the deal. You get well, it. On I your, know your big sexy face. Yeah, that's exactly. all that matters. Someday really. you'll get to see. I'll be around you in person one of these days. We'll get together. Come over there. We're, we're thinking drag about drag. going to Tri-State on Saturday, buddy. Do some drag racing. I got a, we got a mini bike. So uh, this weekend I got a mini bike ride. Me and my fam family, my cousin, uh, we do, uh, we do it. We're doing a big mini bike ride up to Lehigh, Iowa. We're taking all like smaller than 250 cc bikes, and we're just cruising up gravel. That's to the cool Lehigh. as hell, dude. That sounds yeah. like a blast. It's open to anybody. Next year you can come, man. It's it's an annual event. This is the third annual event. Who so, wouldn't want to do that? Just hop on something that does barely 30 miles an hour. Yeah. On gravel roads. And, like, my cousin's got a TW200 with uh, – he put the trailer on it. So he has, like, one of the old motorcycle, uh, like, camper trailers. Just oh. ragged old machines running up the road. I'll tell you one thing, CP. Yeah. I've ridden everything from – 50 cc's up to uh, 2300 cc motorcycles. And the funnest thing that I've ever been on is a moped or a little mini bike where you can just can on it all day and not even hurt yourself. Well, hey, you know what they say, right? Mopeds and fat girls are the be are the funnest things to ride. Just don't let your friends find out. <laughs> they ain't lying. They ain't lying. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's a good time. So you had that thing. What is that? If you need a torque flight transmission, go to this guy. I just got done spending twelve hundred dollars at his shop. Where's he at? And you YouTube assholes aren't helping me pay for it. That's coming out <laughs> of my pocket. <laughs> Gotta get. You gotta you gotta do shorts and get a bunch of well no you don't if you do shorts you just end up getting a bunch of subscribers and not enough <laughs> not a bunch of views on videos. <laughs> the goal is uh, we want a twelve second Barracuda. We we accomplished that goal. Oh, you did. We want an eleven second street driving dart that. I'm pretty sure this weekend we'll accomplish that. Oh, yeah. And then and then we got this dart here that we want to um, push the limits of its cage and try to make it as fast as we can. Out of a garage that I'm in that was built for a horse and buggy. Right. <laughs> I remember you telling me that. And it, it literally looks like an old stable. Like the everything it, in the it is an old stable, dude. Badass. When they say you can't do anything, when they say you can't work out of whatever you work out of, they're full of shit. I love people. We, I love people that judge people based off of that. Unless you're working out of a garden shed and you can't fit a car in it, that's no bueno. But I guess if you had to build it outside, that'd be all right. But there's one thing that we like to make fun of. With the no name nationals, and that's Brian from Dust Devil Garage, who started his build two years ago, uh -huh. and he still and he still hasn't gotten that car to the no name nationals. And then we look around our shop. I bought the cars built, and then I tore it apart and rebuilt it, and now I'm tearing it apart again. That's a, that's pretty much a typical. Like race drag racer, isn't it? That's that's how it goes, right? I mean, re race, rebuild, race, rebuild, race, rebuild. I mean, Jeremy's car has been rebuilt. Jay's car has been rebuilt. We built, we built three cars twice each. So we technically, if you think about it, we built six cars, and the one guy still hasn't driven his car out of the garage. No kidding. Yeah. It's either you get shit done or you don't get anything done, son. Booster famine. What's up, Chris? How you doing, buddy? 
Uh, <laughs> ITT Gar sa says he's a Mopar yeah. guy. We know he's rich. <laughs> Howdy! Oh Little say one? Hi to you say hi. 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 Wave. She's shy. 20,000 people want to say hi to you. Okay, baby. That's my yeah. little Mopar girl. She's so tired. Don't she goes to all the swap meets with me. Daddy, she's so tired. She gets shit given to her for free all the time. I, oh, I you're a girl with your dad at a swap meet? Here, have a Hot Wheels car. Yeah. It's not I'm very trying tough. to teach her the pain and suffering of going yeah. to swap meets. And you're trying right. to give her shit for free. Don't don't do that. I appreciate it. I really do. But I'd rather that you don't. Right. And, and let her feel the sorrow that I feel when I don't see Mopar parts at a you know heavy Chevy swap meet. Where you been going to swap meets at? Uh, we did two in Dubuque, Iowa. That was oh, yeah. torque dust. You heard about that. Yep. And then we did the one in uh, Central City, and you might as well have called that a, uh, you know, not a swap meet. There's a lot of flowers there and decorations. <laughs> you know, it was. It was not quite the, not quite the. Uh, it wasn't Deal what Dad was looking for, was it? It was well, boring. That. There's a six seventy Cuda out here for sale. Dude wants way too much. That's that's about every Mopar guy wants way too much for Cudas, don't they? <coughs> Are you there? Did I freeze up? Hello? Where's everybody at? We're all right here. Oh, did I freeze up? Did I freeze up? I might have froze up. Might have, might have it was probably different. me, dude. Let's go. Up. Here. Let's go. Let's anyway, go. watch me grab another beer. Oh, you got a own beer fridge in the garage too? Yeah, dude. Oh yeah, you got it set up. If we ain't that poor. Just living life. Oh, okay. It was, it was okay. He wants nineteen grand for it. What's up, Scrooge? The vlog. <laughs> yeah, I've been uh, working on trying to get some. I I got to work on junk, you know. So I haven't been able to work on my truck to build anything. So I uh, I don't know. I wanted to LS swap it, and then I bought a bunch of parts for it, and then I'm like, you know, this building car shit is. It just gets but if you don't there's no way to do it cheap. You're damn fool if you think you're gonna do it cheap. Maybe we should do a collab. I, I mean I'd be down with it. To where to where you see what does it cost Bad Tree Productions in one week to make the video versus what it would take me to make a video. Well, what do you which, mean? Like, which well, I mean, it would make sense if that you gave me a tool to use. Oh, gotcha. And I use it, and then you give a review on how I use it. Oh yeah. Well hell I got and see, I got and, and, and then see if I'm if I'm happy with it at the end of it or if I'm not happy with it. I I would be down I I got a ton of shit I'd give you, buddy. <laughs> Trust me. Yeah. If you live Plus closer you. if I, if you live closer, I'd be I you have all sorts of shit. <laughs> I got guys all over Des Moines that's got my shit. <laughs> well, you know. Well, I'm just saying like how to get our stuff seen more. Oh, yeah. For sure. And Absolutely. you don't have a problem by having your stuff seen. I show I show my I show my tool off all the time. <laughs> yeah. 
Little no, three inch tool. No, I'm definitely, uh, I'd definitely uh, be down to help you out. Like that, I mean, anything you need, I'm always, you know, I'm always down to help you out. You know, uh, I wouldn't mind having a CP, the tool attic, detail on the side of my drag car. There you go. Yeah, if my, if my, if I wasn't sticking so much money in my shop right now, uh, I'd be really. No, but don't think about it as actually sponsoring a real drag car. Think about it as we're buddies, and I just put your name on my drag car. Oh yeah, for sure. Then we then then we just do it. You know. What do you think? What do you think you need? What do you need? What would you be needing for tools if, like, let's say you had an option and like you wanted to like uh you wanted to get some you you wanted you needed some tools but you didn't necessarily want to like really you weren't excited about buying it but if you had a chance and anybody was going to give you some stuff what would you what would you need the most a couple <laughs> eighth inch ratchets oh some ratchets some ratchets and uh it's time yeah to go. just a lot of eighth inch and half inch ratchets because yeah. we break them all the time really yeah do you have well, is there anything else that you? Well, I mean, the beautiful part about working on older cars like stuff you do is basically what it's uh, seven sixteenths, half inch, nine sixteenths, five eighths. <laughs> right. Hello. I think he. I think he froze up again. Uh, what's up, Frosty? Larry. What's up, fellas? Okay. Oh, yeah. We have uh, transmission tools. Uh, far as, I mean, I got pressure testers and stuff like that, but I mean, um, what about like uh like tools for checking your duck? Oh, like uh, feeler gauge stuff, or like uh, oh, I know what you're talking. Like you're talking about like uh, measurement tools, like your girls. Uh, settle down. Like second uh, and, uh, and stuff like that. Like a mic. Like a magnetic pole. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Uh, I have I have one that I use for checking. We out. use that kind of shit all the time. So if, if you if you got a tool sponsor. Yeah. See, these, Daddy. 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 Daddy, let's go. Hey. Hey there, little girl. How you doing? Are you, are you hey, how you doing? <laughs> Hello. What are you doing? Oh no, don't stick your don't stick your tongue out. <laughs> how you doing? You got some pretty cool. Let's go get. Uh oh, got it. The other one's in there now. I got two little girls. Yeah, one banger. That's the big hot rider right there. Oh yeah, both that and girls. You don't have you don't have uh you don't have any boys. Just two girls. Just two girls, no boys. This that's the closest thing that I have to a boy is my daughter Aaliyah. Right on. And she goes to all the swap meets with me. Jamie, come here. I'm sorry. Aaliyah goes to all the swap meets. Yeah. Yeah. And I usually end up leaving the swap meets disappointed. Yeah, degree wheels, dial indicators. That's what I was trying to think. Dial gauge, mics, four gauges, papers. Yeah. Thank you, Frosty, for getting the marbles out of my mouth. <laughs> I, I couldn't think. I'm on. I've been stuck on shop stuff lately. So, you know, 
that's my problem is I got to work on new junk and, uh, you know, I got old, you know, I want to work on my old truck. I really want to get to working on my old shit and not, and not have to deal with working on new shit. Uh, I got to get him a pink tool set for the hot rod girl. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, maybe we'll work on that. Oh, we lost him. We lost him, folks. I put a link in the chat for any of you guys who want to jump on. I'm trying to figure out shop tools or uh, shop software. If any of you guys have any experience with shop uh, software, uh, I know uh small town auto tech guy was uh, talking about Matco. Uh, but I, I need, I'm looking for something. I got max tracks and it's time for me to say hasta la vista to them. Hello. Oh, he's back. Oh. I'm back. I was trying to say, um, how would you like to come up here with your kid to let your kid hang out with mine and we pretend like camp and just, <laughs> you know, well, have a really good time? I, well, I don't, I don't have a kid, but if I did, <laughs> uh, I'm, 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 I'm privileged. Hey, you want to, you want to, you want to say hi to everybody? You want to say hi to everybody? Hi. 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 Why are you sad? You got to say hi louder. Hi. Why are you sad? Can you say, can you say hi really loud? Hi. <laughs> I'm mad. She's mad. This one. Dealer trash. Oh, yeah. That they, one's mad. I like her pants. Draft. Pretty cool. I'll go bye-bye. We will go bye-bye. Where are you going? We're going to go home where dad makes the rules. <laughs> oh, you're not at home? <laughs> hi. Hi. Yeah, hi. <laughs> She's I've never be... wanted kids, dude. Never once wanted kids. And then, I, then, then we had her over there. And then all of a sudden, this one right here came to our lives. I'm like, hey, I'm shutting down. I thought I was just having one kid. Bye. It's time to go. All right, go get mom. Go get mom. All right, brother. All right, buddy. We'll talk to you later. It was good to see you, man. We'll get get. We'll keep. We'll get in touch. I'll uh. We'll get. We'll get something going. Sick week is gonna be up here in the next yeah. couple of weeks. I really want to get more. You got to come up to Tri State Raceway during sick week so you can see Cletus McFarlane and Blake Bakey from Bad Tree Productions. Where's, 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 uh, where's Tri State at? <laughs> Say what? Where's Tri State at? Where's Tri State at? <laughs> um, the seventh. No, where's Tri State Raceway at? I can't hear anything because every time you ask that, my daughter screams. Oh, boy. Boy. You come here, buddy. We'll talk to you. We're going to hold you. So. <laughs> I, the kids won't go, so I understand. We love you. Yeah, Bye locally in Iowa. Quick performance. Yeah. CP the Tool Attic. Motion <laughs> Raceworks. Buy from all the Iowa companies that you can. Yeah, most yeah, hell yeah, dude. Take care, Blake. Have a good night, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> What's up, Junie? How you doing? Uh funny from the perspective changes in the curtain climber or two. Uh once you you get a curtain climber or two. Oh yeah. Louis Cassiander, what's up, dudes with wrenches? I put a link in the chat and you guys want to jump in. Uh, feel free to, we can talk about, I, I wouldn't mind talking about cars too. Uh, but I, I thought I'd jump on. I want to get some people's perspectives. If there's anybody, I know there's very few people that, uh, have to deal with shop software stuff. So 
Uh, it's not a huge topic to talk about, but I'm uh, I'm going through growing pains, and I want to get a different. I want to get rid of Max Tracks. I'm I'm uh, I use that shop software. I've been looking at Shop Monkey, Shop uh, uh, no, oh, geez, Louise, Shop Monkey, Shop Key. Oh, geez, Louise. I can't think of the some. What was the other one? L. There's four different ones I've been looking at. Shop management software. So I was hoping, I was hoping uh, that I could get, I could get some people or get somebody that had some sort of. Uh, hopefully, somebody. Which uh, I did get shop uh, or uh, small town auto tech. I do appreciate you talking about the macro. I'm definitely gonna look into that and see what I uh, see what I think. See what I want to do. It's been a long day. That's all there is to it. Got to have QuickBooks and all that stuff. Shop Boss, Shop Monkey, Shopware, and uh, what was the other one? Oh God, there was another one. Wonder if I just use the all has anybody ever used the all data soft shop software? Just out of curiosity. I wonder if I do that. I know Mitchell the shop software is okay, but I hate the hate the uh freaking anyway, auto leap. That's the other one I used. Auto leap. Hey, speak of the devil. I just said auto leap, but that's exactly that's the other one. I was just looking at it. I had to look at my list. I have all data. I have all data. I just work. I just got home from work. It's been a long day. Yep. Uh, when I was a dealership, I used Reynolds and Reynolds TPM. Hey, what's up, Thomas? Uh, yeah, I, I'm curious about Auto Leap. I, I had that one on the list. I got I, on the list so far. I've got Auto Leap, Shop Boss, Shop Shop Monkey, and. Uh, uh, what'd I say? I gotta look at my list here whenever I talk. Shop Monkey, Shop Boss, Auto Leap, and... I don't remember. Anyways. All Data. I'm gonna look at All Data and then the Matco. But I've got Shop Boss and Shop Monkey on, uh, coming in for a demo. So, yeah. Anywho. Anywho's it. What's up, Frosty? Everyone else, all that is okay, but expensive. Owned by Auto. Yeah, I got. I already have all that as a program, anyways. But yeah, I got. I got six people. You can shop. You can jump on. We don't have to talk about. We don't have to talk about shop management if it's not a big deal. But I definitely am looking for that, and I'm not going to stay on too much longer because it's going to be bedtime. Uh, so just to keep a he keep a heads up, I only want to do a quick stream and uh, talk. I just get this out here real quick. So not planning on being on here for probably more than a half hour. I get up at 530. I'm usually out by 11 at the latest. So I'm in fact, I'm ready to smash that like button. Yeah, uh, only use Mitchell Repairmate for auto body. Yeah, I've used Mitchell and I'm not impressed with it. Uh, I, I guess I'm not. I'm not saying I'm not impressed with it. I like Mitchell as far as shop management software, but for repair information, no, no bueno, no, no estani, no bueno.
then a the hot weather's here. Summer's here, boys. Summer is here. Gotta make money. Uh, auto fluent I heard is good. Never seen it before. Yeah, there's so many of them out there now, which makes it hard. Because, but to test them all, that's the problem. Like, I want to get people's opinions about looking at them. And, man, it is really hard because so many people have been using the same thing. Like, a ton of people around here use Max Tracks, and uh, I freaking hate it. I freaking can't stand it. I don't like how it, how it works. Uh, pretty much domestic and some imports, nothing crazy. Uh, I'm trying to stay away from most German stuff. Don't have the time for it. Don't want to buy the soft. I already have the thing about it is, is I don't need to work on German cars, you know? So, uh, I decided that it's not worth it. Most of the German stuff that people want to bring to me is old junk anyways. And why should I kill myself trying to fix their their junk <laughs> and they don't and then they don't want to pay <laughs> you know that's so i said you know what we're just gonna give them the brick wall <laughs> how do you guys like staring at a brick wall is that awkward trying to fire up the laptop yeah yeah, we'll, have, we'll be on for about 20, 30 minutes still. Uh, we got Frosty. Peter's in here. How you doing, Frosty? Hey, what's happening, CP? Now, now you got a brick wall and Frosty to stare at. So <laughs> It's so th soothing. Uh, and the other. Yeah. Yeah, brick wall. Uh, just another brick in the wall. It's a great song. <laughs> so, how's your day today? Boy, I was bad today. I actually took the day off. You know, I got uh, up this morning. I decided I'm just wiped out. I'm not going to do anybody any good by going in and dragging ass. I'm staying home. And luckily, nothing broke down today. It all worked out. <laughs> You'll have that on those uh, big jobs. Man. I completely understand. Oh, look at that thing. Yeah, the old big wrench. The old big. Oh, no, it's just another brick in the wall. That's 70 millimeter. My Armstrong wrench I bought two years ago. I bought it, and then I bought another one and had a giveaway. I had a inch and, uh, what the hell was the other one? Inch and seven eighths that I got gold plated. Oh, I got it. I got it powder coated, gold powder coated is what I ended up doing. And then I gave it away and never heard from the guy again that I gave it to. Oh, no. But I, I bought the, those were, those were super, they were super inexpensive on tripe distributing.com. And, uh, so I, I bought that for like 70 bucks. Doc holiday. Sir. How you doing, buddy? How's work been? Ah, uh, work's been work. Um, I was gonna weigh in on the on the shop management systems. Yeah, one that I had a lot of a lot of respect for was actually the Identifix one. Really, um, it's got a lot of a lot of good features to it. You know, you could uh, tie in all of your different vendors, uh, like your uh, your Napa's, your AutoZones, and all of them, and then also have the uh, the dealer function too. So you could tie in. You know, say you're looking at a a a, a, a Ford. It'll right. automatically bring you to the Ford dealership, look at their inventory, and you can order straight to them. But all, uh, of, your, all of your billing and payroll and everything can be done all in one right. one big circle. That's what that's what most of them are now. Like that's what Max Tracks is too. I have all those same functions. The problem is, is to me, like it's not efficient. Max Tracks is not efficient. So for doing customer, so like I do quotes and there there's a lot yeah. of different tabs and I just don't like how I don't like how it operates. It doesn't function right to me. Not only that, so if I have to adjust a price on a part or something like that, yeah. let's say so. Let's say like so. Instance light bulbs, uh, from my perspective. So light bulbs are really dirt cheap. Okay, so they're super cheap. But the problem is, is most people expect you 
to change light bulbs for nothing. So what do you charge according to light bulbs? Do you charge a half hour labor per light bulb, whatnot? So let's say I was going to go change just a marker light. Probably takes me 10 minutes. Okay. Yeah. But the parts markup on it, on my normal parts markup, would, would be that, like, if it costs me 19 cents for that bulb, then I'm only going to make uh, 5 cents with my normal parts markup. So it's typical that you parts markup light bulbs and things like that. So when you go to Max Tracks to change that, you have to adjust every single part number like that. Oh, and it that. pisses me off. Um, and so it's, it's it annoying. So I have, so let's say I have, uh, let's say I have 250 SKUs in there at those parts. I got to go in for every 250 one of those part numbers and adjust that pace, that, that, uh, that, oh, uh, no. that's, that's, that's a headache. Uh, if you're looking to do individuals like that and you want, you know, quick, fast and, and efficient, uh, vast, uh, we use that at, uh, Monroe for, eons and they still use it it's really? it's another one that you could tie all your vendors to and you can you know on the fly you know oh um i broke this this tensioner when i was changing the belt well i'm not going to charge him for it but i got to put it on the bill so it sh shows that he has it i can just right click it adjust price down to zero and it doesn't bitch about it whatsoever yeah <clears throat> There's some uh, there's some uh, definite uh, drawbacks and pros and cons, but the, the, the problem the is best part about it about the best part about the vast is, and it was one of the things I was trying to tell the guys at Monroe was, you know, you can you know have your techs have like tablets, and right? They'll take a picture of hey this is busted on the car, right? Then send it to the main desk, and then the main desk then emails it to the customer or shows live video even. That's exactly why I want to. I'm looking at Shop Boss and Shop Monkey because that's what they do too. So, uh, but then I don't know nothing about how their system works. Like you're not always going to find quirks. That's a problem. After using Max Tracks, Max Tracks for like two years, yeah, uh, I'm finding. You know, like I'm I'm sick of it. I'm like, there's got to be something better out there. Dealer okay. Track, you know, as as a, as a Dealer Track, which is a what I'm using now at in you know at my shop. It's a very powerful tool. However. Um, if you're just graping around in there, you could really f things up in a hurry. Yeah. Um, it's not as sweet free. <laughs> it's not as polished as uh as Vast or some or or uh, Shop Monkey or any of them. You know, it's uh, Dealer Track on its own. All it's text based, 100. There's no no frills about it. Right on. Um, but if you're looking for something that you know. Hey, I want to send this picture to my customer, you know, like with me, you know, when I, when I'm working here in my garage, I use the all data one so I can, you know, um, send them, Hey, look, this is what I saw on my lab scope here. This is the value you're looking for. And this is what you're getting. Right. You know? And same thing could be said for, you know, Hey, I took a picture of a guy's AC clutch where all the guts were spitting out the front of it. And right. I was able to include that, you know, a message to him. And then all I had to do was wait for an email and, you know, I had a green light to do the repair. Right. Exactly what I want. That's what exactly I'm looking for. Stuff like that, you know? Yeah. But and the, uh, oh. a lot of, a lot of my tools, you know, have links to that now. Uh, for example, my, uh, my Matco battery tester, you know, I could actually send, you know, starting, uh, starting amperage, uh, on the battery, I could do a you know I could run the uh, run it on the starter and the alternator, and then send all three of those as a package to my customer. And say, hey, you know your starter and your alternator are fine. It's your battery, which is what shit. Yeah, like there a lot of the scan tools. I have e I'm, I email stuff to myself all the time. Like yeah, uh, like has I just email it directly from my scan tool. So that is yeah, that is one, that's the one thing. But you gotta you gotta get text to do that too. That's like. I saw, yeah. Sometimes it's harder, easier said than done, just because most some tech that have never done it, it them for them to change. Uh, well, know, it's, it's an uphill battle getting some of these you know graybeards to get on board with, you know. And I'm a, and I'm an old graybeard. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, Wait a second here. Wait a second here. You know, trying to get them to adapt to the new to the new <laughs> software. And say, hey, you know, this is going to make you more money in the long run. <laughs> right. Is Miss, you know, is that Mrs. Frosty? Hi, Mrs. Frosty. <laughs> How you doing? 
Keeping him honest, are you? <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's just like that, uh, you know, the, that, that voltmeter that I've got that you and I are on, on different ends of the spectrum on. I, I love the damn thing and you hate it. But it, again, that one there also. I, just don't, I don't like the, <laughs> for the money. That's my, my biggest problem is with it is my biggest gripe is, is for the money. It's not any better. It's not really more beneficial than. Yeah, it's, it's definitely not a fluke. That's for sure. And I, and I like, I love my flukes too. Yeah. it's it, That's what I said. It's a love hate relationship with it. Second of all, like using standard lead stuff because the, the t leads are on the top are different. Yeah. Uh, it's not, it's not easy to use like standard lead stuff because of the way they had the layout on the top of that okay. EEC. It's just really screws you up. You know, yeah, it, it is what it is. It took a little getting used to. I'll give you that. Yeah. Um, so Frosty, we had a uh, guy on here was a drag racer before. I don't know. Did you, was he watching there? Bad, bad tree productions. You know, I caught the end of that. I saw yeah, you, might, you might want to check out the channel. He's a good dude. Blake, uh, yeah. he's uh, he's a drag racer here. So hopefully eventually, there's a lot of guys that I talk to. You know, I don't always get into that a lot on my channel because I really would rather get, that's the fun side. Like, so the problem is with my YouTube is, is I have to talk, I talk about tools that I work with, but I don't get to share a lot of the things that I want to do for fun. Like, you know, there's a, Oh, different. You know, like Doc was talking about his LT230 and yeah, having uh, four hey, wheels. And stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, dude, that was, I remember I had an LT230 I bought for like a couple hundred bucks and threw it together and, and we had a good time with it. It was actually, they're a pretty decent, fun little four wheeler. It's Versus the when the, when the, uh, so the 230, and I remember when the, what was the 400, EX400 Hondas? Yes. Honestly, the 230 was a pretty good four wheeler, even compared to the EX 400s when they came out. You know, like there, that was like the bit baddest four wheeler on the planet back in what, the late 90s with EX 400 before they started coming out with the TR. Well, the Raptor had, came out, and then Banshee. I had a 660 Raptor. That was my first quad. Right. And then I got rid of that, and I've actually been running this, this LT now for what 14 years. Um, I absolutely adore this thing, and I even had uh, I bought new in 2016 the the Honda four the 420 ES right, and uh, I ended up uh, selling it back to the dealership because I thought it was a just a raving piece of shit. Ooh. Really, absolutely hated it. Um, I actually, I, 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 of all the, I don't know if I've showed, I haven't showed all the pictures, but I've had like probably. I don't know, close to fifty bikes in my dirt bikes. No, I, I never. Even I mean, I'm forty four. You know, I mean, like I, I'm in the business right now and trying to do business. But back in my twenties, all I did was ride dirt bikes all over. To we went to Hatfield McCoys, we went to Ocotillo Wells, we went to Glamis. Uh, you know, uh, ha uh, we went to Anaheim or to Colorado, all yeah. over. You know, I mean, all I, I did was uh, this green. weekend. I was. I was uh, I spent all of Saturday at uh, Side by Side Blogs uh, World Headquarters. Oh yeah, how did that go? Did you get any video of that? Um, I I didn't mostly because of the fact that I'm you know so damn short that all I saw was people's asses when they're doing some runs. <laughs> um, no, no joke. Uh, my buddy's kid though got front. You know, he and I actually got front row when uh, when they blew up two Jay Z. Mm. Oh, I'm good. Uh, 2JZ for those who are playing at home, that's a a, a razor with a Toyota 2JZ motor in it that's putting out 1300 of the wheels. Oh, yeah, that's a race car. Um, it's uh, I mean, it, you can't miss this thing if you look them up on their you know, if you look them up on their YouTube, it's painted up like Jurassic Park Jeep. Nice, um, uh, I remember, I've seen it run before. They did uh, they did some dirt drags with it, it was pretty cool. Yeah, I was at the dirt drags in October with those guys. Uh, unfortunately, this this guy was still down. Uh, it was actually down this week, and I was actually supposed to bring it up to him Saturday, and it just wasn't ready to ready to run, so I left it in the garage. Um, Two JZ came out. He set, hit second gear, and, and it sounded like somebody had shot a rifle because it popped right in front of me when he exploded the differential. Ooh, that's never and, fun. Yeah. Uh, they had another side-by-side -side big dog up on the dyno. They did a, 
they did a couple of dyno pulls with it, and it was uh, pushing what two seventy five. Really? Uh, last year, I had I had my LT on the dyno, and you would be surprised how little power these little bastards actually do put out. Uh, with the carb, um, have, with the carb, and you know the piston and that that I have in it now, it was putting out nineteen horsepower. That's, That's crazy. <laughs> It's not that think with 250 pounds of me at 60 miles an hour, it'd be a lot more power than that, but no. <laughs> so I I used to build 650s, XR 650s. I was a wanted to hill, do hill climbing. So there's my there was my fleet of uh units there that I had. I had a player players 800 four four wheeler, my 650R air cooled, and then my or 650L air cooled. And then my 650R, which I that thing was making almost 52 horsepower. I had a hot cam, built it all the it shit. Had two wheels gives me the heebie-jeebies anymore. Um, well, I, was I, a two was, <laughs> I was 21 when I had a partial sever of my spine, uh, mm. courtesy of a CBR. I got into an accident on a test drive. Uh, this bike had, uh oh, this bike had six miles on it when I picked it up. Uh, I went to Honda because I was like, hey, let's, you know, I wanted to see what it was like to have a crotch rocket. I've always ridden baggers. You know, I had uh, my Harley and then I had uh, a, tri a Triumph Bonneville that I used to run. And oh, yeah, Bonnevilles are cool too. I uh, I got on this, it was a it was a CBR, what was it, the 1000? Yep. And I mean, I had every bit of wrist into this thing. I was on 294 just outside of Chicago and I was just uh, ripping, and then it sounded like I got hit by a howitzer. The uh, transmission locked. Oh, no. Back tire stopped. Bike shot out from underneath me, you know, 90 degrees out from underneath me. I went and got folded around backwards around a concrete pylon at a toll booth. Wow. Six months I spent laying on my belly in a hospital, and the doctor made one mistake. Told me I'd never walk again. Not only did I prove him wrong there, I also proved the army wrong and got back into the army and continued on. Wow. Crazy. That's, uh, that's amazing. I used to, what I would do is I would I would sneak out of I would roll myself out of bed and actually I actually taught myself to walk. I was like, "Fuck you! You're not going to tell me I can't do something." Right. And, you know, so I got a medical waiver. They they got me back in, and then <laughs> four years later, I get blown up in Iraq, and they're like, "Yeah, no, you're going back stateside." Uh, no, <laughs> I'm not done yet. <laughs> so that's how I ended up with my uh, 82nd Airborne uh, Challenge coin. I I, I got to post a picture of that one of these days. I've got that, that sitting in the house. You know, I, I hate it when people tell me I can't do something. I'll prove them wrong every fucking time. Right. You know, so it's just like, so it's like I've got going here. Uh, it's sitting in my buddy's barn about an hour north of here. I'm doing an LS swap into a into a AK. Into a what? Uh, 2009 uh, JK Wrangler. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, the, uh, the, the, JK, I it's actually a JK. Wrangler. The JKU, it's a four door, but uh, those are really. I've done a couple of uh, Jeep swaps now, and I got to tell you, those are definitely uh, my favorite as far as just getting them in and out. Um, I know, I know, I'm probably gonna get flamed for this, but probably my favorite swap I ever did was a five hundred Ford into the uh, Mazda Miata. That was fun. How well does that fit? The uh, the motor mounts almost are almost line up perfectly. I mean, yeah. you couldn't ask for an easier swap. The big, usually, the biggest problem with that I that I've ran into is transmission pan uh, yeah. because of the way the drive shaft, the front drive shaft comes in. You got to get it. They, there's a couple companies that make different drive transmission pans. Some are different than others. Like you got to get a shallow one, and some have to have a divot in the back for them. So, just depends. I I a bunch of my buddies have done them now, so I'm pretty well versed with them 
Yeah, but the the uh, three hundred two just dropping it into the Miata almost it's almost like it was meant to go there. Oh, the three hundred two. Sorry, I was off there. I, I yeah, you're, thinking, you're thinking deep and shallow pan on the uh, Chevys. No, on the Jeeps. On the Jeeps, oh, yeah. they have the, was, because the way the front drive shaft and the differential so close to the transfer case. When you put in there, when you got to put, uh, if you put a, uh, a 700 or a 4060 in there, usually that's what everybody does is just, you know, made them together in there. Then you can. Yeah. You, the only thing I could recommend doing if you're going to do that is to, you know, you can get a clocking kit for the transfer case too. And that'll make it a little easier. Is the sump in the right place? On, on yeah, the, on the yeah. six, 4060, the sump is, but there's a transmission pan. That you can get instead of half. Well, if you did clocking on the tran, tran, uh, transfer case, you probably that's going to pull quite a bit apart to do that. So this is a lot easier way to do it. That's what we did on what's on my buddy's older Jeeps. I don't. I've never done one on a 2009, so I don't know how that one lines up. But I know on anything like <laughs> we're going to find out real soon here. here. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. You can let me know because I'm kind of interested to see. But the biggest thing is because Jeep, everybody was want. Now they make them. You can get the Hellcat or what is it? The you can get the V8s and the Jeeps now. So everybody are buying them. But yeah, that was like yeah, Jeeps. Um, yeah, the that's another one too. That side by side is doing. Um, uh, in in the in the in, they've got three barns out there. One is a, a one barn is strictly parts department. And then there's one is a complete shop, and there's another one where they got storage. Uh, in the storage barn right now, they've got the. Uh, was that the general that uh Cletus McFarland yeah. gave them? And then they've got uh -huh. another, they got another side by side. I uh, damn it, if I hell, if they call it hell something or other, I thought uh, they called it the general or something. Well, there, well, there's there's a, no, the one I'm talking about, uh, it's a they're getting ready to hellcat swap a, a side by side, yeah, that's uh, what I thought. Yeah, they got a they got a motor for it and everything. I uh, yeah, they got a it's a CF moto that are. They're going to be dropping yeah. a freaking Hellcat motor in. It's going to be crazy. <clears throat> Those guys are uh, going through some problems out here. They had to fire. They had to let go another guy that uh, they had to let go one of their best guys, in my opinion. Uh, that one dude uh, uh, quit. Had to quit going there. Well, quit there's making... there was some drama involved with that one, though. Uh, you know, between them and Dirt Dude's Army, uh, there is. The, the the one of the guys from Dirt Dudes, uh, his old lady started screwing one of the guys from fucking uh, Side by Side. Oh, that guy. Uh, what's his? What's that guy's name? Uh, the, the, the well, he's like he's an old motocross racer. He he reminds me of all my buddies. So I like I, I kind of was like, how did you let that guy go? He had the most balls of them and all. Yeah, but I, I think that's what I think that was all fallout from that whole drama. They had a whole podcast, though, I watched, and they said it was because they couldn't afford to pay him. Yeah. I think that was, I think he was, I think that was part of it was, his, you know, not that they couldn't afford to pay him so much as, you know, he was starting a family, and, well, he needed, you know, he needed to, you know, go straight for that. <laughs> huh. But, uh, you know, I, I, you know, I try to stay out of, you know, just oh, like, yeah. Just like any any uh, YouTube or Facebook group, I try to stay out of the drama and headache and bullshit. I'm here, no, I don't I'm here to race and have fun. You know, yeah. it's, you know, when 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 that one guy tried calling me out on my page, you know, when I was when I when I made the comment about hose clamps, and I'm oh, like, dude, yeah, you're always gonna have drama on the internet, though, no matter yeah. what. I even if even the nicest guys out there uh, uh, still get. There's still always this, the, the internet's filled with trolls. You know what the deal is, is back in the day, I thought this was funny. I seen this thing I posted on my Instagram and I said, back in the day, we didn't fight on the internet. We fought in person. And that's what made right. people mad. <laughs> and now, now they, they can run their mouth on the internet because they got new recourse. <clears throat> I wish like, you know, it's funny, it's funny you mentioned it, but, you know, we, we were talking about, you know, go back to the whole host clamp thing, you know, Unfortunately, my laptop's chained to my desk, my uh, toolbox, but I can point to you right here. There's a 37 year old ho uh, spring clamp still being used. <laughs> yeah, all the, all the Japanese were using them back then for. Yeah, I, all, hell, I got, I had them on all my hold of Hondas too, you know? Yeah. I've never had any problems with it. These is are, what it is. Like, 
your traditional spring clamps. These are the like they they're like little stainless steel wires just in in a in a hose clamp shape. But I personally yeah, it let me down. Uh, I tried to start it up this week. Um, uh, I ordered a carburetor six weeks ago, and guess what? I still don't have a carburetor. Yeah. So I put I put a different one on. I put a I put the twenty eight the twenty eight millimeter on there, and this thing just did not want to idle. It was just pissed off. And then of course you know with the new clutches, I haven't got my cable adjusted properly. So I said, "Fuck it, I'm just gonna sit this one out." Is that the moon, Frosty? He's froze. He's got his truck, but is that the freaking moon? That's our old. That's an F-150. Huh? A survival. Oh, no, but I mean, was that the moon that was shining, that bright light? Oh, yeah. no, that's a street light. Oh, I, that's a street dude, light. Dude, that that's, your, yeah, that's your truck? That's your F-250? Yeah, she's a pretty good truck. Oh, yeah. There's a lot oh, left yeah. of that one. On the, I did, the I did get a donation to uh, to my channel, by the way, guys. I'll show you this real quick. I haven't tried it out yet. These are uh, this is going to be pretty badass. What did you say, Frosty? I'm sorry, I, I, he was he was still talking. Doc, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, what'd you say, Frosty? Oh, maybe he froze up. All right, I guess. What did you say, Don, Doc? Again, somebody sent my sent to my uh, email, you know, asking, "Hey, can I send you a package?" I was like, "Sure, why not?" I don't know if you can see that. Uh, these writing glasses look right between the lenses. Oh, no. Nice. Got a camera. Yeah. Huh. How's that work? Don't know yet. I haven't. I just got it. Oh, Bob. We lost you right when you were telling us about your truck. Yeah. We, we lost you. We, we were talking about your truck and you froze up on us. Oh, sorry about that. No, it's all good. I'm way more interested in those glasses. No, <laughs> they were pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, uh, one of my subs who uh, wanted to remain anonymous sent this to me. Um, I don't know what kind of I, I don't know what all this 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 jargon is on the instruction manual when it comes to the specifications. Maybe some of you guys can help me and tell me if it's worth a shit, even worth trying. Uh, it says. <laughs> It's uh, 1280 by 720, whatever that means. That's pretty good. That's decent. That's That should be good it enough says, for... <laughs> Cat wants to give Frosty a, an eyeful. <laughs> yeah. But then it says something about being only three megapixel. I don't know what that what all that yeah, crap is. That's, that's bad. So the 7 by 20 is decent for your resolution, but your, your th uh, three megapixels pretty low but it, it'll be interesting it, I, it'd be cool to see what the footage is like so what will happen is is if you look at my picture right over here that's really pixelated so that's like up it's like blowing it up close so those mm -hmm. will probably look good with spread open images and good good lighting but if you start and i'm not no expert at camera stuff here but i will tell you that uh so then if you are looking at stuff up close it probably won't be a very good resolution so if you're like working on a car, make sure it's kind of distanced when you look at it. When you start to pull it up close, it'd probably be really pixelated. But so yeah, so it'd be cool to see, it, I mean, see what they look like. Just to, just start of just to see what happens. Yeah, I mean the lenses. You could I took the lenses off. You can actually take those off so you don't have. So you, if you're working indoors, you know, um, you know, it's not going to be dark. It's not, all you're doing is just that, at that point just wearing the frame with the with the camera in it. Um, I did figure out it does have a microphone, but I, I've never used it yet. So, uh, I got it just the other day, and I'm looking forward to giving it a giving it a go. I mean, I, I've always been shooting with GoPros, but right on. Why not try something? That'd be a total game changer doing videos. Oh yeah, it would be. That would actually make it a hell of a lot. Like, I put you can put a GoPro on your hand, camera and your head and all that stuff. But I mean, like. That would be yeah. actually nice because you'd get bird's eye view, and then you wouldn't have to feel like you were holding a camera all the time. You yeah, know, that was, that was my biggest gripe with my, two, you know, my two of my GoPros. You know, I um, I took two videos down because uh, I had uh, viewers complaining that uh, you know, with the GoPro being mounted on my head, it was making people dizzy. 
you know what I'm looking yeah, at? They always complain about that, but honestly, it's just you gotta you gotta look past it. Don't don't read into everything that when you first start YouTube, that's the worst part about it because uh, the only people that are watching, you get really nervous. You gotta you really I mean, I tell you what, if I if I went back and started a channel tomorrow, I could start a channel tomorrow, okay, with no with zero subscribers. And the one thing I wouldn't care about is you're gonna lose people, you're gonna gain people. And yeah, like the people that complain are just the ones that want to be whiners. Usually, if they and you'll find out the more they complain, the more they whine. The, they're just wanting to be heard. You got to kind of got to ignore them. Like I mean, I understand. Like when you start getting a residual amount of complaints in your in your comment section, that's something to pay attention to. Yeah, I was you know, like last year I lost two GoPros. <laughs> one of them. Uh, one of them, it was my, you know, really my fault because it, you know, I exploded it. You know, it was, I was trying a different camera angle under a truck and unfortunately it hit and well, got smashed. And then the other one uh, took a fall from about 10,000 feet and I never found it. Right on. Hmm. Um, I decided to, uh, I had it on a rig on my chest when I jumped out of the plane. And next thing I know, I saw a little black dot get really, really small when I, I was falling. I'm like son of a bitch, <laughs> that's gone. I see a lot of those chest rigs on the boats when we go. Uh, we go sport fishing. We go out for tuna. A lot yeah. of guys are wearing rigs. They, my biggest complaint about the chest rig is they're very constricting if you're a big guy. Yeah, yeah, they are. I'm not yeah. a fan of them. I, I find it on, wearing a hat and put it on your hat seems like a better deal than. I find than it difficult to breathe when I've got that. that that strap around my chest. I bump the and, son of a buck out of the time. Maybe, I work on trucks, so when yeah. I'm working on a truck or something like that, I, I bump it. But it's just then the other thing is is magnetic mounts are kind of your friend if you're working on something where you can kind of magnetic and then invert the camera view and like point it to where you're working and just let it stationary. Yeah. I think you guys got my camera angle view uh about a week ago I put it up there as a test when I had my Cherokee. I put it on the door Got up on the highway to about 100 mile an hour to just to see how it performed, and uh, it did all right. You know, one of the things I one of the things I do with mine though is I got uh, a piano wire, and I tie off to the mount, and then I put a a, a, a loop around the uh, the mirror so if it falls, it doesn't go anywhere. Hmm. Yep. What's up, uh, Sergio? We're just getting ready to end it here. Yeah, but I was just jumping on for an hour. I was trying to get some guys that had dealt with. Uh, you should start. You should start doing stuff around body work. Uh, yep. Definitely not a bad deal. I tell you what, you'd be you'd be surprised at how many people would actually be interested in watching body work stuff because it's like most people buy cars and they want them to be mechanically sound, and they would rather take try their hand at body work than they would working on engines. That is a fact. One hundred percent. Body work is black I, magic to me, man. I, doing metal. I could never. I, I'm not good at it. <laughs> I've I've done some things on my own vehicles, which I'm not going to say I'm an expert at it. But I put in uh, I put in rocker panels and stuff like that before. They're nothing perfect, and I'm not out to be. I don't give a shit. I honestly don't give a shit about being perfect. But you know, on YouTube, people will de like per experts, armchair experts will sit there and tell you, oh, bro. You know, and they're not even body guys anymore. You know, yeah. most of them are body guys or what, you know, whatever. You know, it's just, <clears throat> it is what it is. I, it's just, you kind of got to look past those I mean, people. The closest I don't... thing I've ever come to, to body work for me, I was, I worked as an upfitter for a long time. You know, I was putting like police lights on, search, you know, searchlight sirens. And then I was building, you know, uh, I was building vans. Uh, either for con contractors or the last two I did, you know, before COVID, uh, the company I worked for actually folded because of COVID. But uh, I built the last two uh, Grand Rapids police forensics vehicles. And, you know, so I was putting in racks and equipment, a lot of which I had to sign a contract stating I wouldn't talk about what I, what I did, you know, everything I, everything I did with that company was even if I drew up the schematic, it was their intellectual property. Right, you know, Pole Barn Garage. Pole Barn Garage does some pretty cool, interesting stuff with some body work stuff. Like I can, have, I can appreciate the fact that he's just getting uh, his stuff back on the road. I don't know 
you know, I don't really care about where the level of work it is, and but I've read some of his comments from people, and I'd like to see their shit. That's all I'd like to see because they got a lot of opinions about stuff, but everybody can have an opinion about something, and unless they're showing it, yeah, I don't want to hear it. You know, I'm. I, you know what? I always my dad used to say this when I was a kid. We we lived in Missouri for a little bit. He goes, "I'm we live in we live in the show me state, so show me." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know, yeah. So, well, I think it'd be really interesting to see somebody actually do the work instead of just replacing a fender. You know, replace a bunch of parts. Let's see right. somebody. One of the things that drives me nuts. It doesn't matter if it's body work or mechanical work on YouTube. Is they either do a time lapse or they skip shit and they're like, "Oh, here it is. It's done." Yeah. Oh, okay, I saw you start, then I saw you finish, but what did you do in the middle? <laughs> hey, Sergio. Yeah, what's up, Blake? Uh, yeah, there's a uh, there's a lot of different ways to skin a cat. Quite frankly, I don't really care what everybody else does on their channel as far as you know. If that's the way they want to do it and they feel like it's right to them, that's their prerogative. That's the whole point of living in America. Free to do whatever you want. Have you ever watched some of the guys from outside of our country? I've seen sketchy shit happen <laughs> here in America, but if you watch some of those third world country guys do stuff, they make they make the sketchy guys look like practical professionals here. So oh, yeah. I mean, the ones that the ones that scare me are the ones. Uh, uh, I watched a, a body repair. Um, it was a Japanese uh, dealership doing. You know, they do uh, body work there, and just the the amount of uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The amount of professionalism, you know, in what they do versus what we do. I mean, they make us look like chumps. Yeah, the Japanese are very, yeah, <laughs> they are wild in India. They're yeah. very methodical. Um, I had the pleasure of working with a few Japanese guys. and Or barefoot. Yeah, <laughs> flip-flop welders they, or barefoot. They would stop in the, middle of the, in, in the middle of what they're doing, and all of a sudden it was nap time. And then there was a, a period where they stopped and they had, you know, they, they would do like these stretches and stuff and then, then go back into working. Well, what the hell? And you yeah. know, there was a language barrier, but from what I gathered, it was the, uh, the idea of limbering up. So that way you you're know, not beat the hell when you go home. You know, what's cool about Japanese culture is, is that they actually uh, help each other out. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, like if, if somebody's, if somebody's struggling or something, they're very, you know, like Jap Japan and Taiwan culture. I've, I've watched a lot on J Taiwanese culture because I didn't know about it. And they go to the parks in the morning, just like you're talking about stretching out. They go to the parks in the morning and they do stretches and, you know, like they have little gatherings, which it, they live like a very Zen life. I wish that, you know, I wish so that we could start adapting. I mean, there's so much that it's, I think we're missing here, not just professionally, but just as a society. Right. I mean, if you've ever, if you ever get a chance to go overseas and see how other people live, right. The Japanese, the, Japan is a very clean nation for how, how large of a populace they are. You know, oh my God, you know, you don't see a piece of litter on the ground ever. I mean, they take their trash with them and bring it home and throw it out. Here, you know, you get done with that Big Mac in the styrofoam container and you're, you're just chucking it out the side of your car at 100 mile an hour. Yeah. Uh, should I keep my Milwaukee? Uh, well, I don't think anybody should, unless you're buying a, a snap-on ratchet. <laughs> uh, or, or, or unless you're getting DeWalt tools. <laughs> Lake says keep the Milwaukee. I don't know if you can see over my left shoulder there. I've, I've, I've actually started quite a collection of Milwaukee recently, too. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's really to, to to get rid of all of your Milwaukee to go to snap on seems like a pretty, pretty j big jump. I really want the APC one. We'll get them both. There's no listen, you don't have Rick, you don't have to buy be brand specific. The one thing Ooh. that people never talk about that are bandwagon or uh, cordless tools is, is they say buy this brand, and I think that's the foolish thing to do. Because if you want to get a tool and that you have to buy that battery platform, why would you be married to one bat? That's like saying that you're being brand loyal to Milwaukee is being like you support that company wholly for everything they do. What do they do for you? Nothing. nothing. They're never going to do nothing for you. You know, yeah. like don't be brand loyal to anything. 
I, you know, I'm not brand loyal to anything on my channel. Uh, I like certain brands and I like certain companies, you know what I mean? But I, I don't have every, like, I don't have everything Lyle. I don't have everything snap on. I don't have everything Mac. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've got in my Mac, in my, my roll cart, I've got all of my, uh, my snap on, you know, you know, my, uh, my snap on electric, you know, either the 14, four or the, uh, the 18 volt Then I, you know, at home, you know, this is before I brought all my tools home. I, I was in the Milwaukee, you know, I, 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 before all of that, before I was even considering snap on, you couldn't, you couldn't give me anything other than DeWalt. Right. And not, you know, not, and I've said it before and I'll say it again, just like you just did a second ago. And I've said it in my, in several of my videos, I am not brand loyal anymore. I have, I have Milwaukee. I have DeWalt. I have snap on. I have Matco. I have Makita. All know, five brands. Whatever works. You grab yeah. the I even have know. Craftsman. I have old 19, 19 two Craftsman stuff. Um, I have some skill stuff. So at the end of the day, uh, I'm not I'm not I'm not brand loyal to one brand or not. Like I think you're a damn fool if you invest on one tool. You know, get sure the battery platform is interchangeable, but let's say, for instance, I don't like everything from Milwaukee. Like, sure their impacts are good. Uh but I don't like the ratchets, so I got snap on ratchets. Yeah. You know, so now okay. I can now I'm trans now I'm now I can have an eight sixty one where I can buy a bare tool because I have two 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 batteries that I bought with a and now I don't have to buy a kit to buy that tool. So now I can buy the bare tool or buy a used tool from anybody. And this like my my DeWalt. I have twenty volt and, and twelve volt DeWalt. I'm diverse. I can buy anything. Sure, I have a few more chargers, but what difference does it make? You you buy if you buy twenty Milwaukee batteries, or you buy ten Milwaukee batteries, five Dewalt batteries, and five Snap On batteries. It's all the same. You still got twenty batteries. Yep. At the end of the day. Yeah. You know, um, you know I, I I talked a couple weeks ago about firing uh, the apprentice and the uh, Master Tech. Uh, I've got a new apprentice, and this guy, he's on it. Um, he uh. He's early 20s. He comes to me and goes, hey, man, the Snap-on truck's here. I says, stay away from it unless you're going to buy it outright. He goes, what? And he sat down with me in my office as we talked about it. I says, look, man. And I, and I gave him a bunch, of, uh, a bunch of my old retired tools. You know, I gave him a complete, you know, a couple you know, sets of sockets, you know, shallow and deep. And then I gave him, you know, some other stuff. But I was like, look, you could go and buy brand new. I'm not telling you what to do. Yeah. Right. I'm going to tell you right now that that item over there at the yard sale or at the pawn shop, it's just as good. It might not look as pretty as it did when it was brand new. Save some bucks, dude. Right. The kid, doesn't um, even, I told him, I even told him about your channel I mm -hmm. and, and my channel, for example. Right. The kid doesn't have a fucking smartphone. <laughs> That's 20, good. 22 years old, I think he is. And That's he's still good, on an old Verizon flip phone. That's wow. good. At least he's not playing around the internet. He doesn't. He doesn't. He, he he tells me flat out. I don't. He doesn't even have social media. Yeah. None of it. You know, because he's got a. You know, he's got a computer at his workstation. You know, that he brought from home. And he's like, yeah, I don't. I don't do YouTube. You know, or Facebook or none of it. Pretty rare, but definitely respectable. Oh, yeah. um, he's Lakes, a go-go. Lakes, I understand. Uh, people are want to be Milwaukee. Uh, loyal, but at the same time, I'm also curious how many battery chargers do you have to have too for Milwaukee too? You still have to have two or three battery chargers to keep those batteries going. So yeah. at the same time, it seems like it's no matter. It doesn't matter to me. One, you know, two, the batteries three, pick up a ton of things. I will tell you that. That's one thing I don't like. Uh, hey CP, did you see the three H three H drive twelve point W World War Two plumb bob socket junk junkyard necromancer sent me. He found unopened box of twelve. Interesting. I'll have to check it out. Uh, I've got six chargers here on the side of my my toolbox right now. <laughs> it's it's sick. I have my my Dewalt works great. I stick with Milwaukee. It's ninety five percent of the guys who work with Milwaukee, so I can swap better. Yeah. See, I don't have that. I don't have to deal with that. And my I work for myself, so I'm my own. I got to rely on myself to have what I have. Uh, here you. Yeah, that's and it's another thing is depends on where you're at, but. Uh, even, even when you're working in shops, the difference between Sergio working at HVAC, your guys probably are willing to share with you 
shops guys aren't willing to share because most people screw them out of stuff and lose their shit, damage it. Uh, I, I use Milwaukee M12 a lot. Um, the other 18 volt stuff, not so much. I mean, where I work, I mean, I've bought two different guys, uh, the M12 driver with the clutch on it. You know, the yep. one you can not break a screw off. And both of them disappeared. You know, I have this one M18 and have them, you know, have it either off, broken or left in a puddle of water somewhere. Right. You know. This one here, um, <laughs> funny story was my first Milwaukee tool. Um, I didn't pay anything for it. I, uh, well, technically I did. Uh, buddy and I and I bought a, uh, a storage locker and yep. I just saw this sitting there and I grabbed it. Uh, I was thinking uh, one charger, three M12s, three M18s on one charger. There you go. You know, and, you know, it was loaded with like a lot of like cheap Chinese tools and, you know, God knows what else. But this was the only actual good tool that was in there. And I've I had to take it apart and clean it because, I mean, the the chuck was all rusty. And I mean, it, it was de it was definitely in the bottom of a bucket when I found it. I would I would never trade my M my uh, twelve volt Dewalt for an M twelve stubby, not even like after having my M, my twelve volt stubby uh, Dewalt. There's not a chance I'd ever. I owned a Milwaukee stubby. I would never go back to that ever again. I hated that tool. Uh, it to me it sucked. My Dewalt is perfect. Just got enough power. Uh, I don't like and fa I'll be honest with you. The M twelve line in in itself for me doesn't doesn't do it for me. I like the Dewalt twelve volt line better. Uh, for the tw for like the eighteen volt stuff, if I if I was gonna do eighteen volt versus twenty volt, I could see going to Milwaukee because I think they're just fine. They would handle the stuff, but uh, on the twelve volt line, I'm a Dewalt guy, one hundred percent as far as their tools on that. I love the drill. I have a twelve volt and twenty volt drill, and I love the the smaller drill. Well, I I still have a do I, did I get rid of that or do I still have that? I think I still got an M twelve drill. I still use that too. That's not bad. I don't have a twelve. I got that's. I wouldn't mind doing the M twelve drill. That's too. That's pretty decent. It what happens? That thing's got pretty behind me on the floor. Sure, okay. I like the soldering tool. I think is an absolute joke. That thing never has enough power, and people like put a six hour. People are like put a six hour amp hour battery on it. Doesn't doesn't matter to me now. It's get up become so big and bulky that it defeats the purpose of soldering when you're trying to do dash work. Uh, yeah, but I, uh, I have a uh, what is it a Ryobi soldering iron? It, it slips right over the top of their battery, and it works just fine. Yeah, you know? I like the stapler. I have an M12 stapler. I love that. How That's all. Really? Yeah. Hmm. I like does, the stapler. Does it take the real big staples, or just like, or you just you know like the little ones for like doing uh, insulation and such? Uh, yeah, it's like insulation and stuff like that. It's not a huge one. Uh, but I, that's, I use it for doing some like upholstery shit or like fixing yeah. some like seat covers every once in a while. If you got some like, uh, old stuff, but I don't hog ring it and you can, you can staple it to the plastic, Yeah, you know, like coming up, that's, that's where you got to staple like seat covers on motorcycle seats is basically. Well, that's why, that's why I'm asking. Cause I, I'm going to be recovering the seat on the Suzuki. And, <sighs> you know, I, there's no way in hell I was going to use my, my old black and Decker power shot and do that. <laughs> yeah. No, it's uh, it's definitely like it's just my, my I'm picky though. You know what the sad part is, is? Is at the end of the day, I'm super picky. So any of anything that I say is going to be for me just being an absolute pessimistic prick about what I pick. <laughs> you know, like that's the bottom line to it. Like it, I have to. I, I people should know that about me right off the fact the front because I just I am out on I'm I'm out on being like. Yeah, like for me, I'm not. One of my favorites is this guy here, and it was a surprise. A lot of people hate that, though. There's like it's like fifty fifty on who hate and people that hate that. That's my go to soldering tool. I've been that like that's my favorite one. Now I am looking at uh, getting another one, but I've been I've used every soldering tool because I'm constantly chasing it. My Weller, my Weller, uh, um, desk or my Weller station is my still my is the best because you can turn you can adjust the heat all the way up to. Like twenty five hundred degrees. Well, so, this one I put the end on it so I could do heat shrink under the hood. Yeah. Anything I say though is at the end of the day, guys, you need to understand when I'm saying something, 
I'm saying like I nitpick shit to the nitty gritty. I am not I am not accepting of like I all the little crap I like pick apart. Like whether the trigger's good. When you're talking about to me, like it's just and it's it's what specifically I like. So you know, everything I say is kind of subjective. If it for if you if you're okay with getting by with a few things, me, I'm not tolerant of that shit anymore. I just don't tolerate I, I want everything perfect the way I want it. Yeah, the Yeah, you, so. you talk about triggers. People, you know, argue with me to this one all the time and they're, they're like, oh, I hate this one because of this trigger. I absolutely love the trigger on this one. Yeah, exactly. That's why I got an A61, and I think that's what, like Jessup Corley, I think that's probably what he's, that's exactly why I have an 861 because I do love the trigger. I, I And you know what the other thing is? So the 861 is brushless, and it has a delay. And yet, you know what my only biggest qualm with that is? Is the delay in it is still irritating to me. Let me see. I, I have, this is a 761. Yeah, I, this one I haven't even run yet. Okay, you have you have an eight sixty one and seven sixty one there. Seven here's a seven sixty one. Touch the trigger, it takes yeah. off. You have an eight sixty one. Oh, you're gonna you're gonna feel it. If you've never noticed it, now you're gonna be annoyed with it. You couldn't do this, and I'm telling you, don't do this well, if you have an eight sixty one and seven. Just argument. Here's the same battery. Go ahead, the eight sixty one. I really don't see too much of a difference. You don't notice the delay? Not it's brushless. It's done. It's brushless, so it's got a different trigger. That's what delayed the eight sixty one of getting put out. Oh, <laughs> you, can, you can't hardly. You can't tell. I can only tell it in the trigger because when you go to switch back and forth, try to switch them back and forth. <laughs> I, maybe I just don't see it. <laughs> yeah. yeah I tell you what, at, at, as soon as I get my box paid off, I'm going for the 861, and I think yeah. the, the quarter inch is what the 825. Yeah. Yes, the M12 ha hacksaw is a monster. That thing's a beast. I will say that the M12 uh, for drill hacksaw. I don't know what right angle impact. I don't know what that means. Oh, I've seen that thing, the right angle impact wrench. Yeah, I don't know about hacksaw, but I know the right. I, I will say the M12 uh, hacksaw is a freaking animal. That thing is amazing for the, for the size and whatnot. What's up, Mr. Howdy? This uh, is the uh, CER8815 <laughs> drill. Uh, that was actually my first snap on uh, cordless. What's up, James? Um, my Never DeWalt, had any snap-on cordless drills. My DeWalt died. My snap-on guy loaned me that drill because I was I was uh, in you know retrofitting trailers, so I was changing from uh, incandescent bulbs to uh, uh, LED, and drilling through that galvanized just beats the hell out of these things. Well, he goes, yeah, just use that while you know your DeWalt's you know getting warranty worked. An hour later. I'm still drilling holes with this thing when it when it bound, and it picked my fat ass up and flipped me over. Whoa! I called Snap and I says, "You're not getting that drill back. Just put it on my fucking credit." <laughs> and he's like, I, "I'm the guy that'll drag an air hose out there when I'm doing a lot of a lot of yeah. trailer stuff, and I'll run the rivet gun on one hose and the air drill on the other." I'm, yeah. I'm still old school like that. My right angle impact, and I still use my three eighths. Uh, I still use my 3 8 impact air impact just because it's a monster and power it overpowers anything in the M12 line, stubby 3 8 line, unless you're going up to a 20 or 18. Yeah. One. My, so it's on, uh, MG325, the Haas, yeah. Then, I've got his big brother over here, too. The uh, 25, yeah, yeah. Uh, you pointed I'm out not a big, I'm not as much of a fan as the 725. It's kind of heavier, and I'm used to my yeah. my uh, my older uh, IR titanium that works. But I it is I don't ever run into the, too many problems where I need that shit. You know, it is what it is. You you pointed out the inflator. My favorite of all of them because I had the Matco one and I hated it. Uh, Which one? Shit, if I could, it it, it was maroon. It was like the head of it was hex shaped. 
Yeah, that's the same. Well, it's the same as the blue point. This one, this blue point that I got, absolutely love it. It's the same exact thing. They're just rebranded by Astro. Yeah, oh, are right. they? Two of the yeah, Astro. Both, yeah, because this one, I, I could change this foot to the uh, to the longer one for when I do semi tires, but you got to screw it off though, right? Yeah, but I've got two. I put a second O ring on there so that way I could. It's not tight, tight. Oh, okay. It doesn't leak. Yeah, so see that deep you need is a special. That's got a special coupler in it, so you can change them. I don't, yeah. mine supposedly was supposed to come with one. Apparently, my Matco dealer screwed me on it, and uh, I think Torque Test Channel was going to send me one, but uh, I was supposed to get a second coupler, I guess, and I didn't realize it, so I've only had one the whole time that I've been using it. But you just spin it a little bit, and then you can pull yeah. the coupler off and slide the new one on. That's the whole reason. Old Milton too. <laughs> uh, it's old time too. That's I grew up on that. The uh. Uh, I got to get going off here because it's late. And I'm tired of shit. But, uh, that's, that's another thing I'll show you guys later on. Uh, once I get this shop organized, I have a compressor. Uh, I converted a York air conditioning compressor. If you guys are familiar with that brand at all. Oh, yeah. The York is what they – it's a it's an oil bath compressor. It's not like, you know, the, the compressors we have in most cars. York, you'd find those on, like, the uh, late 80s Jeeps. If I converted it because it's you know it holds oil inside the case, I converted it to be a belt drive, you know, to stay a belt drive. But instead of running AC, I made a secondary bracket, put it off to the side of my block, and I had it filling a tank on my truck. <coughs> yeah, you they got kits you can buy online to convert those York compressors into actual air compressors, and then you just run a 90 psi switch on your tank. To the clutch, so that way the clutch just cycles when the you know the tank goes below a, a certain threshold, and then it cuts off at ninety or one hundred and twenty, depending on what switch you buy. <laughs> uh, off here, guys. The the brother behind me was cooking, and uh, uh oh, it, it's not waiting. All right, yeah, yeah, it's all good. I need to shut her down too. Yeah, yeah I people. Got the rack. I got a long day ahead of me tomorrow. I got my wife says you're cute. 14s. Uh, which one's? I'm not even on here. So which one's? Which one of the two guys on here is she is, is she talking about? Because I'm not even on here. <laughs> so she says, yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, we're head around. Like, comment, share, subscribe, ring that bell, boys. Have a good one. Have a good rest of the week. Later.